A couple of days ago, it was confirmed that the leaked Google documents were, in fact, true. And this led many people to think, has Google been caught in a web of lies? And what do these leaked documents mean for the future of websites, blogging, and getting traffic from Google? Has anything changed? Has everything changed? Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be combing through these leaked documents based on my 25 years of doing SEO, ranking on Google, and making money online. And not only that, but we're gonna take a look at some of the key points of these leaked documents from Google, talk about how they affect your ranking, how they can help you actually rank faster, and not only that, but we're gonna put this whole helpful content thing to the test. That's right, in today's training, not only are we gonna show you what stands out in these leaked documents and what they mean for you and your ability to make money online, but we're also gonna go through the rankings of one of my websites. Yes, we're gonna do this live in an age where nobody really wants to do that. And we're gonna get honest about what helpful content is based on search engine keywords and the intent behind them. This is super important. If you understand this, you are gonna learn the secrets behind the multi-trillion dollar industry that is Google search results. So smash a like button, buckle up, because this is going to be a crazy ride. We're gonna take a look at some of the myths, some of the true stuff, and some of the downright, wait a minute, what? Yeah, that stuff too. Because let's face it, if you've been trying to do SEO or rank your site on Google for longer than five minutes, you've probably noticed that everyone has a different opinion. One SEO guy says this, another one says this, Google says everything but this. So the question is, who do we trust? How does Google actually rank sites? And how am I getting huge increases with some of the AI content I've been posting very recently? So I'm gonna do something that very few SEO people do. I'm gonna put my ego aside because my goal is to help you and myself get results. And results have nothing to do with what kind of car I drive, how good of an SEO person I think I am, what Google says, what Google wants. It all has to do with serving the end user. Because let's face it, if Google stops sharing results that you wanna search for, you're gonna stop searching and there will be no Google. That's the beauty of capitalism. Even though capitalism is quite a bit rigged, a lot of these things are still affected by what the consumer wants. And you are the consumer of Google. Even though you might not pay Google for anything, every single search you perform is proof that you are a consumer of the Google search product. And this search product makes them hundreds of billions of dollars each and every year. Not to mention the trillions of dollars that are funneled to all the businesses that get traffic from Google. So yeah, what you're about to learn right here, right now, is big money. And in just a minute, I'm gonna hop over to the computer. We're gonna take a look at some of the things people are saying. We're gonna look at one of my blog posts, and we're actually going to use AI right now, live, to boost that post up by providing helpful quality content, getting honest about what people are searching for and what we're providing, and boost this thing up in the rankings super fast. Yep, this is something I've been doing for a long time. And it's all based 100% on data. I mean, let's face it. We can have all the Google leaked documents all we want. We can comb through these day in and day out. But the fact remains, Google tells you what they want in plain sight. Every search you perform on Google for any keyword is showing you what they think in this moment in history is the most relevant. And if we provide the most relevant content that not only answers the question, but also helps the user out, then my friends, we can make tons of money online. So let's jump in the computer. We'll talk about these changes. We'll talk about these leaked documents, and I'll show you live 
start to finish, how I take a page that's ranking like number 9,000 and boost it up to the top of Google super fast. Come on, let's get started. Today, we are gonna look at some of the things that were included in the Google leak, some of the things that I think are important, some of the things that I think are just kind of fluff that don't really need to be paid attention to, and what you need to do if you wanna make money with Google traffic, get Google rankings, or anything like that. Again, I've been doing this for over 25 years. I've seen a lot of pie in the sky, doom and gloom, all kinds of crazy stuff, and it kind of seems like no matter what, everyone's just kind of doing the rain dance, hoping that it'll rain so that they can say, yes, it's because of my dance. When in fact, we know that the truth is much different. Now, some of the things that stood out to me in the Google leak were the use of Chrome data. Now, this was kind of a, well, duh, where we're looking at it and it's like, do you think Google is using Chrome data to influence their rankings based on what people click on, sites that are popular? And the answer, of course, is yes. They're probably using data from all different types of sources, and rightly so. It helps them give a better result. Saying that they're not going to use data from all of the sources they have is kind of like saying, yeah, Facebook and Meta are just after helping us all connect. They're not doing anything creepy at all. And to that, I would give it a big bahi. So, Looking at Chrome data, I don't think is much of a game changer, but it will tell them likely what's going on. Again, I don't know if they're actually using it. They say they don't. The report says they do. They're probably at some way, shape, or form using the data from searches and behavior and different things like that. When you have a company that big, they are going to use multiple data sources and use that to put out the best product possible. That, of course, makes them the most money. And looking at Google, I think that there's a lot of things at play here, and I don't think they're just out to get the little guy. I think really what's happening here is Google had to respond to an AI problem that they found out existed after the damage was already done. So trying to play catch up and get rid of the junk reminds me of a lot of 2003. In 2003, there was a bunch of dirty sites that ranked for pizza terms. So you would look for pizza in Miami, and you would not be looking at a pizza. I mean, maybe sausage, but yeah, no. So looking at that, I think that Google had to adjust and change their algorithms because there was just a bunch of junk. A couple of months ago, I'll link to it in the description, I made a video showing some of these AI sites that were just regurgitating garbage, gaming the system, and getting lots of traffic. Sometimes when Google responds, it is a baby out with the bathwater kind of thing, and I think that is what we are seeing a lot of now. So Chrome data was one of the big ones, and I would say, yeah, of course they're going to be using that. And second, click-through rate. SEOs have known for a long time, I think I first figured it out in like 2001, back when I was about 22 years old, that click-through rate does have a factor in the ranking. If you rank number one on Google, but nobody clicks your link and they're clicking number two, of course that is going to send a signal to Google that number two is more relevant and something people want to read, so they're probably going to rank it higher than number one. So I think that is something, again, that is like, of course they're going to promote the stuff that gets the clicks, even if it's not as quality of content, because it's doing a good job of providing the content and it is something people want. Unfortunately, in the world of content creation, we have to submit to the fact that what we think is good might not be what the vast majority of people think is good. For example, on this channel, I have to be entertaining. I'd really rather just go through data and help you make money, but that's not what people want to watch. Unfortunately, there are many channels that get way more traffic than me that are sharing, in my opinion, less than good information when it comes to making money online. So the question is, which content is good? I mean, look at the news. Cable TV news gets much more viewers than local news. But local news is actually more true to what actual news is. Again, the viewer is the one that decides. And ultimately, if you stop clicking on things, Google won't rank them. And we've known that for a long time. The next thing we want to look at is what's known as a sandbox. 
Ever since about 2002, Google has been accused of having this sandbox, which is basically like a penalty box for new websites. If you come out with a new website, go to the penalty box till we figure out what you're about, and then you will rank. While some of these reports are saying that Google has a sandbox and there is some kind of waiting period, I think that that might be something new in regards to AI. Because let's face it, if I was to put up good content on a domain name and get one good backlink, I'm talking like from the CNN homepage, from Wikipedia, or some gigantic site in your niche, you will get picked up and ranked within minutes. So the sandbox doesn't apply there. And also, I've seen lots of sites that come up with no backlinks, with nothing, that are standing on their own, ranking in Google with AI content or human-written content. As long as it's good, they're going to rank, whether they're new, registered 20 years ago. It doesn't seem to matter. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the data and separate feelings. When we get feelings out of this and we get emotion out of it, which I know is really hard to do, Luckily, I learned this in rehab 10 years ago, and yesterday was my 10th year sober. So, I've known that for about 10 years. Unfortunately, I had to learn it the hard way. But emotion and money have nothing to do with each other. We just connect them because our society connects them. When we look at this stuff, it's not like Google's out there saying, your site is bad, we don't like you. Now, it's not personal, except in the case of the people that were out in the open trying to game the system. That's much different. That might be personal. However, when we look at a sandbox, I don't think that is the case. Now, when getting to domain authority, what does this mean? Well, as I mentioned a minute ago, a second ago, when we have domain authority or a new website, right? So let's say you have a new website and you're wondering, is there a sandbox? Can I rank? Can I make money? When looking at this, if we have a new website, let's say it's called Fork Money. Okay, it's fork money, whatever. They're, they're making money for food or something like that. If you were to go out there and get a link on a gigantic recipe or food website, let's say you get a link on Gordon Ramsay website or something like that, what's going to happen is Google is going to look at that rank. They're going to say, this site is important, so this one must be important too. And they're going to rank it literally instantly. Will you get a number one ranking? Depends on the keyword, depends on the link, and depends on your content. But a brand new domain should get ranked right away. I remember this years ago when I started a company to help people get indexed faster. I inadvertently found out that by putting my link on the ClickBank login page, that link and all links associated with it, which at the time were brand new sites, and at that time people were talking about a Google sandbox, yet all of those ranked within minutes. Yes, I'm talking the exact same day. So, as we see, domain authority is important. It might not be important in terms of, like, what a href says or what this says or what that says, but the entire Google system was built on the idea of college papers. If you were to write a college paper, and I'm ad-libbing here because I never went to college, but when you wrote a college paper, you would have to have what is called references or resources. What are the places you got your data from? And these references or resources would link to like, okay, I wrote an article on the history of AI, right? And this goes to Ray Kurzweil because he's talking about it. And if you have a stack of a thousand college papers and they're all about AI and all of them mention Ray Kurzweil, well, then chances are Google's going to be like, hey, Ray Kurzweil must know what he's talking about when it comes to AI. This is the nature of what a backlink is. Only instead of being a paper, it's on your blog, your website, and all over the internet. And the more people that are saying you are about what you're about, the better you look to Google, the higher you rank, and the more domain authority you have. What we want to do is be so good in our niche that Google can't help but pay attention to us. This is why it's super important to niche down and niche down really, really, really well. Instead of being a blog about sleeping, maybe be a blog about a certain type of mattresses or why people can't sleep or insomnia or something like that. But looking at these backlinks, they have and always will be super important. We are seeing that they're important right now, so much so that even websites that don't exist, maybe the site's offline, Maybe the hosting doesn't work. Maybe the domain is gone. They are actually still ranking with zero content. 
So yes, domain authority and backlinks are always going to be important. Another thing that they mentioned is authorship. They want to know that there's actually someone behind there, someone who's in charge of what's going on. This could be like a pen name, it could be an author name, it could be someone that works for you, whatever it is, they want to know that there's some kind of authorship. And also, we're seeing a lot of change with factors as uh, having a store, having things to buy, having Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, different things like that are all adding up, showing Google, hey, this is a legit thing. It's not just some guy trying to rank so that he can make money with AI by giving spammy results. That's all that's going on here. And of course, the number one factor that Google has been saying forever and that all the SEOs agree on is that good content is key. And I'll say good content stands alone. Why? Because if you have a piece of good content, that should stand on its own in your niche, whether you get Google traffic or not. You should be able to share that in your niche on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and get traffic like that. When we have a good piece of content, it will stand out on its own. And if you optimize it properly, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, you should be able to boost that up and get rankings and lots of traffic. Let me show you exactly how that works, because what we want to do as SEOs, even when our traffic drops, our content drops, we want to look at the data and do better. Case in point, the example we're going to do today is a post I have about the GoDaddy appraisal tool. My thinking behind this, and this should always be the thinking, is how am I going to do this, get the traffic, and what am I going to do with the traffic once I get it? Well, I know that people looking up the GoDaddy appraisal tool want to know the value of domain names. And since I've been doing domaining for a long time, what we're going to do is we're going to provide some value to these people and then get them into courses or have them do domain name stuff or whatever it is. Either way, they're looking to make money by selling or buying domain names, which is what I do. We can see here that for GoDaddy free appraisal, we're ranking number 15 and that gets 800 searches a month, which means I probably get 13 searches a month. Now, because this has a long list of related keywords, there's probably a lot of traffic going to this, and I know because I track everything, and I know I'm getting a lot of traffic, but I want to do better. I'd like to rank for some of these terms, like GoDaddy appraisal, domain appraisal, GoDaddy domain value, and all of these ones here. We could see that for GoDaddy appraisal tool, that's probably my best one right now, if you don't count that other one we looked at, where we're at a number 19. So the question is, if I was looking up GoDaddy appraisal, which gets 5,000 searches a month, which would add a lot of money to my business here, then that would be good. So let's go ahead and take a look at what value would be. What would a good post about the GoDaddy appraisal tool be? How would I make something that people actually want to look at? Well, first, I have to get honest with myself and realize that I will never be as good as the GoDaddy appraisal tool itself. So no matter what I do, they are always going to be better. I talked about this a couple weeks ago when we were looking at the results from a popular gaming site. Their traffic had dropped and I brought the case, being devil's advocate, saying, hey, look, they ranked for um, a term that was NES emulators, a game emulator. And they talked about the emulators. And now the number one result is an emulator. People wanting an emulator want an emulator. People wanting an appraisal want an appraisal. Now, we do see that Reddit, NamePros, and other domain sites pop up. We also see Medium down here, Diggity Marketing, and lots of other people in the SEO industry. So the question is, what are they doing? Do they have domain authority? Yes, they do. And how can we do better? So we see here they have alternatives, other tools, estimating the value, 10 appraisal services. How can I do better? So let's think here. Someone is looking up the word GoDaddy appraisal. They want the tool. They want to look up the amount their domain is worth. Now, I actually went through because I know, and this is where knowing your niche comes in handy, over at the Profit Scoop, I know that people are frustrated because GoDaddy made it to where you can only look up three domains a day. And for the vast majority of people buying and selling domains, that's like, yeah, not enough. 
So I made a tool here and we actually created it based on the GoDaddy API and people can go here and do the GoDaddy appraisal. They can put in their domain right like this, affiliate marketingdude.com and it'll appraise the value of their domain. And it looks like I spelled it wrong. There we go. I spell that wrong about 400 times a day. And we can see here, it says that the value of the domain alone is $1,800. Now I can also go through and do affiliatedude.com and I can do more than three, which means this is actually valuable. So quick question, for those of you who look up domains, would it be more valuable to go to the GoDaddy site and be timed out at three domains? Or would this tool that's giving the same results and allows you to search in bulk be better? Ah, okay. Now you're starting to see the picture here. Good content would be having the perfect tool. And now that I'm doing this, I'm actually thinking a step ahead. I'm sure I can have my programmer create little links here that would appraise it at other sites as well. That would mean even more value for my searchers because how easy would it be to be like, okay, now click to see what it is over at Estebot. Now click to see what it is over here. I mean, that would be kind of a game changer, right? Yep. I thought so too. So the idea here is let's look at the keywords and let's see if we're doing a good job. GoDaddy appraisal tool, hidden profit secret. Okay, so I am ranking, but hidden profit secret, that's not really what they want. That might be what my audience wants, but that's not necessarily what a Google searcher wants. Also, do they want a video about this? Maybe, maybe not, that could help. And it might even help if I had a YouTube hosted video here. Then I go into GoDaddy appraisal tool. Is it accurate? Strengths, comparisons, and different things like that. So what I would do to make this a better piece of content, I could actually go through, I could take this content right like this. Okay. Right there. I can go over to chat GPT and I can start to boost this up. So what we're going to do is we are going to say, what is the intent of someone searching for the GoDaddy appraisal tool? This is going to get the intent so that it knows what we're starting. Value the domain, making informed decisions, portfolios, all this stuff here. Okay, great, excellent. Great. Now, what would be a good title if I had an actual tool they can use that is not limited. So something like GoDaddy appraisal tool, unlimited search here, that's going to get clicks. And we saw that yes, CTR is key with Google ranking. So again, notice how we're doing this. So now it has ultimate domain appraisal, get the accurate. Great. Now add the word GoDaddy since my tool uses GoDaddy appraisal tool, okay? So we'll go like this, see what we come up with, get the ultimate best title. Free unlimited, top domain valuation. Okay, so I'm gonna say something like this, GoDaddy powered appraisal tool, GoDaddy tool. So what I'm gonna do is say, let's try GoDaddy appraisal tool, unlimited version here, plus value tips, something like that. Now, if you wanted to get even better, you could take one of the other things like plus free estimator, that might also get you, plus uh, estimator tool, that would probably get you some other combinations of the keyword by having it. See how we have estimator in here, appraisal value, something like that, plus, plus value estimator. Now I got two different keywords, right? So I got GoDaddy appraisal tool, unlimited version, that's for the clicks, plus value estimator. I like that, okay? So something like that, it'll tweak it, make it a little bit better. We can choose which one we want later. This actually, without the word ultimate, I like that, boom, that's what I want. That would get the clicks, okay? Then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna say now, let's use, now based on that, please rework this content. And let's see what it does when it reworks the content from my page. 
because now what we're going to do is we're going to actually have the link there. Now it's showing limitations, different things like that, shows the strengths, and it's going to show some comparisons in a table. So what it did is it made my stuff much more concise. It's giving examples, and it's actually doing a pretty good job of making this a better piece of content based on this stuff, right? So now it's got some examples, which I don't know if those are examples I had. It might have actually made those up. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, carrier cards. So it did make this much more concise because what we did here, this is just the transcript of the video. So it's actually turning it into notes, which is going to be a better experience for the people searching, which should boost me up in the rankings pretty good. And there we go, right? So now I can go through and I can rework the content here and we can see the different comparisons and everything like that. Now, of course, when using AI, make certain that you are checking these in Grammarly because sometimes AI will copy sentences from other places and we wanna make sure that it's thinking on its own. Now, when doing stuff like this, it's probably not gonna show much. And if it does, it might be like affiliate marketing dude or something because obviously this is already on my website. So we'll ignore the ones from my website when doing a refresh. So here we see this is affiliate marketing dude, affiliate marketing dude, affiliate marketing dude. So no problems there. There is no plagiarism other than on my website which is normal because this is my website, okay? So now we have a better piece of content. It's laid out better. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this video down, okay? So let's go ahead and change the title, right, like this. And our title was, uh, what was it right here? GoDaddy Appraisal Tool, Hidden Profit Secret. We don't want that, so we're gonna do up here, GoDaddy appraisal tool, unlimited version plus value estimator. I'm going to do this. GoDaddy appraisal tool, unlimited access, value estimator. Okay? Boom. Right there. All right? Then I'm going to go through. I'm going to move the video down because people don't really care about the video. So let's move that video way down here somewhere. We'll just put this on the very bottom. Right like this. Okay? Okay. Then we're gonna to go to visual and we'll start reworking the content in a very simple way. So here is the transcript. Don't really care about that since we changed it up a little. And the button voodoo, that's one of our plugins we give you with Blog Profit Network that makes those little buttons. And those buttons convert like crazy. All the stuff that we create and all the stuff that we build for you is based on stuff that I've done after having hundreds and hundreds of millions of visitors to my websites and what I've learned by spending money on traffic, generating traffic and everything like that. So now we're gonna go through and we'll do GoDaddy appraisal. Is it accurate? Let's see where this starts. So here we're starting with, is it accurate? Okay, so we'll go like this. We'll just copy all this here. Okay. Yep. Well, let's see if we can copy it better. Let's do like this. There we go. All right. So we'll put that here. Now I am also going to go through and I'm going to put the um, unlimited version in here. Okay. So let's do up here. Try our GoDaddy appraisal tool here. Unlimited version. So right here, I'm going to iframe that tool. So I'm just gonna go through on the profit scoop. I'm gonna get an iframe of this. My programmer is actually working on it right now, which will make this tool work in the post right here, right? So first thing they're gonna see is, hey, here's the post, bada bing, bada boom. Now we're ready to go, right? So now we can see it's a much nicer, cleaner experience. It's got some examples here and everything's looking pretty good. And of course, it's a lot shorter, concise, to the point, which I think is going to work. And you can take a look at some of the other sites here and see exactly how many words they have and see if it's important. So here we could see these guys are talking about. So at the top of Google, as of March 22, this is important. They're saying, hey, they're monetizing the domain appraisal tool. You got to pay to get it. Okay, so we're coming out one with like, hey, this has a free unlimited version. There you go, 
right? Then we could see here, GoDaddy appraisal, uh, three alternatives. This has quite a bit of content, not as big as what I had with the transcript, but it does have some stuff. And in my opinion, the user experience here isn't that great because of all the ads and the things blocking. So, you know, we'll see how that does. But then we have some other stuff here. It looks like short, unique content is what is key here. And I think ours is gonna be super unique because we're actually providing the tool. And this is something I teach in a video in the description where making tools and little things for your audience is a, it's kind of like a free pass to getting rankings because you can post them on different places, you can share them on forums. I mean, think about it. If I had that tool, I could go over here to this forum and say, hey, you know, you guys are, are all irritated. Why don't you try my free tool, right? I could literally just post right here and say, Here's my free tool, bada bing, bada bing, there you go, right? Super easy and it will rank and you can see people are interested in this. This is a key, looking at your keywords, looking at your data and saying, how can I do better? What else is out there? And how do I serve the market in a big way? Because when I look at search terms, what we are looking at is this is inventory. This is Google inventory of people searching. Thousands of people searching every month interested in appraising the value of their domain. That is worth money to me. We look at this, some people say, oh, well, 5,000 clicks, whatever. Okay, but that's not whatever to me. Same as videos. How many views this video gets is not whatever to me. That puts money into my pocket. And so my incentive is to do a good job. So going through this, looking at it, I'm gonna update this post as we see fit here and go through and talk about Here's the tool, here's the link to the tool, here's what I learned with the tool, here's some examples, and show them all the other stuff. So again, using this in a very, very strategic way is key. Now, one of the other things that was mentioned in the Google leak was what we call demoters, things that are gonna get you, you know, demoted or like the opposite of a promotion, right? That was anchor mismatch. This is something I see all the time when people build sites and the link does not match what is on the page. If you have a backlink out there that says, read this for the Google tool, there better be a Google tool there, otherwise it's not gonna fit. Uh, SERP demotion, this is signaling uh, where people are not happy with the search, right? Maybe mine dropped because people weren't happy with what they were reading. Maybe they didn't want to read a transcript. Maybe they actually wanted the tool and the alternatives. Navigation demotion, exact match domains. Now, I haven't seen this be a big thing. I know in the old days, people thought having an exact match domain was like, come right here, sir, to the front row of Google. That never was the case, but here's what I would submit to you. If you want to learn about exact match domains, then maybe you would want to go through and look at Google searches and see if they exist. Very important. If you're looking up a keyword like how to start juggling, does howtostartjuggling.com come up? Does juggling.com, best way to juggle? Are there domains that match the query? And the answer nine times out of 10 is like, yes, there are. So I think either it's because they're niche sites or whatever it is, but it doesn't seem to be a negative effect. So. More about that in a minute. Next, we have the product review demotion where there was a bunch of AI reviewing products and they're looking at that more strict. They want people who actually use the product, try the product and have tested the product. Location, this is a big one because if you watch the video below from a couple months ago, we talked about Safeway near me. Looking up Safeway near me showed a bunch of AI sites. Let's see how they're doing now. If we were to do Safeway, near me and we scroll down back a couple months ago we would get a bunch of ai garbage sites and these ai garbage sites basically they went against everything we think was important and you know here's one here 10 hours ago on a website that looks like it was started a couple days ago domain was registered four days ago. So this flies in the face of anything we thought we knew about some Google sandbox because, hey, there they are. That's a pretty competitive term. He's ranking with Safeway. Here's another one right there and some others here. 
So it looks like, yeah, their act really didn't clean up, and we're seeing a bunch of junk rank. And that's in the location niche. So oftentimes what you see ranking on Google and what Google says or what the leak comes out with isn't always fact. Now, again, always use SEO ethically. Always focus on the user. Don't spam. Don't use AI to generate tons of content just to make money. Those things are coming with much heftier penalties as time goes on. Then there's other demotions and things like that as well. And I found this on iPollRank.com. So when looking at this, the best thing to do is look at your data, see what didn't rank, why? See what does rank, why? How can I do better? Because what happens here is the search results page is a barometer for what Google thinks your site is about. So it somewhat thinks that I'm about GoDaddy appraisal tools and things like that. All I got to do is do a better job now that I know that and boom, I'm off to the races. This is what we do all the time with our students in Blog Profit Network, in High Ticket Niches and different things like that, where we're helping you guys rank and understanding things at a level of, well, what happens here? How do we adjust? That's the nature of business. If you expect to open a business and just be successful out of the get-go, well, then you're probably better off buying some expensive franchise where everyone's going to tell you what to do. Starting your own business like this is completely different. Now, is there a lot less risk involved than other things? Well, there might be, and it is actually pretty simple. And now with AI, I think that anyone can make good content super fast. All you got to do is focus on what people want, focus on the keywords you know you can get, and make a good piece of content that will stand alone. When I make that GoDaddy tool, the thing's going to go nuts because people are going to want to use it, which means it doesn't matter if I rank on Google or not. I have a good piece of content for people that are interested in using a tool to find the value of a domain name, which again, for me, is super valuable traffic in the world of SEO. And using this strategy, you can get your rankings to skyrocket if done correctly. Just watch what ranks, do better, tweak, do better, focus on the user, get that traffic and make it work. I mean, once I'm done with this tool, I can now use it to generate a mailing list of people interested in buying and selling and valuing domain names. I mean, think about the value of that. Years ago when I started one of my teaching businesses in 2008, I paid $250,000 for my mailing list in the way of Google ads. I ran Google ads to it, built a mailing list. I still make money on that list today. So it's very important that you treat this like a business, not just here's my blog, let's hope it ranks. Oh no, it didn't rank, what do I do? No, we wanna focus. We wanna look at the facts and look at the data. When leaks and things like this come out, we gotta realize Google is getting smarter because they have to. If they don't get smarter, we are going to see more of this junk when we search for Safeway. Yeah. That doesn't make Google look good, so they need to adjust. So what we need to do is help them out by giving good content and be objective with why our content is good, why it might not be good, and how do we make it better. And to learn to make it better, get the notes from downloadmynotes.com. Check out blogprofitnetwork.com, which is where we go through and teach you all this stuff each and every week. We have two calls, one on Tuesday where we answer all your questions about niche marketing, make money online, affiliate marketing, and everything like that. And then what we just started recently is a weekly call on Fridays that starts next week where we're going to talk to you about WordPress, rankings, SEO, themes, plugins, and how to make money with WordPress. You can see I converted an entire spot of my office house over here into the WordPress city section, where our WordPress expert, Jesse, and myself are gonna be hosting that call each and every week. And make sure you check out the links in the description so that you can learn more about SEO and how to make money online. Thanks again for watching. I'm Marcus, and I'll see you in the next video.